Welcome back, everyone. We've got another one-on-one -on -one with a drafty, and we've got someone who is no stranger to the Pommy and Oz channel and all the draft coverage. We've got big man Tom Scully from South Australia and West Adelaide. He's got more snags in him than your Bunnings. He has. He kicks goals for fun. How are you doing, Tom? How are you on, Pom? Um, thanks for having me on, mate. It's my pleasure, my friend. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, a bit relieved now that school's um, over and done with. So, uh, yeah, no, just good to have a bit of a break now and, um, yeah, start to prepare to hit the track running. How are your nerves? We're only a week away, which is unbelievable, but a week away from the draft, how are you feeling? Yeah, the nerves are starting to build up now. Um, as, yeah, as a couple of the other boys have mentioned, um, yeah, the nerves are sort of starting to really sort of um, hit now. Um, I guess um, I guess in the lead up, uh, about a month out, you know, you've still got school, um, which is still taking up some of your time and it's good to sort of get your mind away from it. But yeah, I guess now that that's finished, um, yeah, it's just all you can really think about now is, um, yeah, what, seven days next this time next week. So um, yeah, it is, it is a little bit nervous. Um, but yeah, at the same time, like I've still got... Um, uh, senior preseason at West Adelaide to focus on and stuff like that and other stuff to take my mind off. So, um, yeah, nah, it's um, a little bit nerve-wracking, but, yeah, nonetheless, still pretty good. That's good. It's an exciting time, though, isn't it? Exciting time yeah. for you. Definitely. Now, now, obviously, we're in the off-season. You just said you've started to begin pre-season training. What, what were you doing to keep active aside from school in the off-season? Anything exciting that you do? Um, yeah, so I guess I was just, um, yeah, just trying to keep myself fit for the combine. So, um, yeah, I've um, been playing a bit of um, cricket recently as well for school. So um, that sort of takes a bit of my time. But I guess, yeah, the preparation and if I'm keeping fit and off. So, yeah, I was um, just sort of building my way up to I'm preparing for the combine, um, doing a lot of running especially. And I guess now I'm trying to sort of um, hit the gym a bit more, a bit more frequently. So, um, yeah, really sort of build up my size and mass. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of what I've been doing to, um, yeah, prepare. So, yeah. Over 200 centimetres tall as well. So, I imagine you bowl a mean, fast bowl. Oh, nah. Oh, the, oh, the, oh I wouldn't say fast. Um, fast is a bit generous. But, yeah, no, nah, they do um, They do come out all right, um, get a bit of bounce. But, um, yeah, sort of prefer myself as a bit more of a batter. So, yeah, I like to come in at sort of six and, um, yeah, tee off a bit. So, yeah. Mate, we like that. We, we, there's nothing better than a big man uh, smacking you around the ground in a bit of cricket, I've got to say. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, you've you've been talked about here and there for a couple of years. You've been in the – for those following the draft, there's always been a mention of yourself. Now, we had, obviously, COVID here in Victoria, more so than South Australia, but – how did COVID affect your development, but also more so, how did you get over that indecision? It was heavily affected your junior footy and under 16s particularly. How did that affect you and how did you get deal with that? Yeah, so COVID um, affected our, like you said, so our under 16s year, which we uh, in the Sanford under 16s, we only got to play two games. Um, <coughs> so yeah, I wasn't, um, I unfortunately didn't get to play them. Um, yeah, so uh, that year just um, went back to local footy, just down at the local club at Lockleys. And, um, yeah, just played the season there. We were fortunate enough to still get a season, um, which we were pretty lucky. So, yeah, like yourself um, in Victoria where it was sort of a bit different. So, um, yeah, we were we just spent the um, year playing there. Also played um, college footy as well for um, CBC. So, um, yeah, managed to get um, a full season out of those two. Um, competitions, which was really good. Um, and yeah, I guess it was just sort of, um, it was a bit disappointing not to sort of play in that under 16 comp, but um, then again, managed to, that all kind of went by and um, yeah, the next year we managed to get a full season. So um, yeah, I guess it was, it was a little bit of a struggle um, not being able to, you know, do some certain stuff and the restrictions and stuff like stuff like that. But yeah, I was fortunate enough to sort of have a, um, have um, yeah, just dad and stuff to support me and, um, yeah, just making sure I was keeping active and not just sort of lying around on the couch and stuff like that so I could go out when I can. So, yeah, it's kind of how um, Mate, I took time went by. 
It was it was a tough time for Australia wide. I mean, obviously, you guys were a little bit luckier than us. It yeah. seems to stick around in Victoria a bit, but it's good to yeah. see that you managed to find ways around it. Yeah. No, now, with uh, with your season this year, obviously, it's been a highlight reel of big marks. You can take a grab, you kick snags for fun. How have you seen your year though this year going into the draft? Um, yeah, it's. I definitely say it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster. Um, there's certainly been some sort of ups and downs. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, um, I've, I've, I was really happy with the way um, I started the year. Um, I thought I had a pretty good preseason, um, just working with um, some really good um, support staff at Westies 18. So, yeah, I was sort of really confident and firing to go, and um, yeah, it kind of showed. Um, through runs round to seven, um, managed to kick a fair amount of goals, and um, yeah, my marks were sticking, so which was an improvement off the back of last year. And yeah, then as the year sort of carried on, um, I things um, managed to get into the AFL Academy, um, which was probably one of the best experiences of the year. Um, yeah, being around, um, yes, the some of the best players in the country is unreal, and um, just seeing how they go about what they do and. Um, yeah, how about how they go about their business was just unreal. Um, and then, yeah, and then that sort of um, – and then from there, it kind of, yeah, just went downhill a little bit. Um, fought, I missed out on state selection and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, missed a lot of the champs. And, um, yeah, try to not get too down on it. Um, just try to keep sort of working hard. And then, yeah, so sort of, uh, out the back end of the year, um, was fortunate enough to play in. Um, some play some senior games um, for West Adelaide, which I was really grateful for. So um, played two finals games, um, and yeah, we were pretty stiff to go down, um, and unlucky to go down against Sturt in that reserves prelim. So um, yeah, overall it's been um, some ups and downs and challenges, but yeah, I've I've found I've um, gone pretty well, and um, I I can I've adapted to the levels I can play of footy. So yeah. Now, we've, you're talking about them levels. You've played, like, all sorts of levels. Is there yeah. a massive step up for you from when you're playing, you know, the Colts to the seniors to the reserves? Is it, it, We hear the AFL footballers talk VFL to AFL. It's yeah. like two different games. Did you notice yeah. that, particularly playing against the bigger bodies and the seniors? Yeah, I guess, well, playing the last game, the last champs game against... Um, WA, I found there was a there was a little bit of a difference between that and sort of yeah uh, an under 18s game at Wessie. So I guess yeah the skill levels are obviously um, very very high. Um, but yeah, probably from the state game, it's definitely like no one misses a kick. It's just all like on the chest, like um, yeah, just it's all very sort of fast pace. I guess from a, the under 18s, I'd probably say it's a little bit. Um, sort of stronger, I feel, um, just bigger bodies and stuff. All well, same in the state game, but yeah, I guess the main difference is probably just the um, skill execution, and um, yeah, probably maybe a, a, a yeah tad quicker. So yeah, probably say that. Now you you've kicked goals everywhere you've been, um, and in every, every level, which is um, huge credit to you. But how would you describe your game style? We hear a lot of comparisons thrown around by AFL pundits. For those watching at home, how would you say Tom Scully is as a footballer? Um, yeah, I'd like to think uh, I can sort of be an uncontested mark and sort of contested mark player. I'm sort of an all-round type forward. Um, I'd like to think I can get um, separation pretty quickly off my opponents um, and, yeah, can also uh, go up and sort of take a big, strong contested mark in a pack. Um, yeah, I guess I'd like to think, you know, my ground balls are pretty – are pretty clean for a guy on my size. You know, if the ball's on the ground, I can be able to dish a handball off quickly and, um, and yeah, sort of, um, yeah, hit the scoreboard quite frequently and, um, and yeah, being involved in scores as well. So, yeah, I'd probably say um, those type of things. Mate, I love it. It's an exciting prospect for those watching at home. You are a very good footballer, I've got to say. You catch the eye. Now, you're in that horrible range for a South Australian where a lot of clubs with your picks where you're scheduled to go are interstate. What are your thoughts about going interstate? Is that something that excites you? Yeah, it oh, yeah, it's definitely exciting. Um, yeah, as a lot of the other boys mentioned on here, um, yeah, just the thought of starting a new life um, interstate is something that's definitely sort of very exciting and um 
as well as um, it can be challenging. But um, for me, I feel like I'm a very sort of self-sufficient and independent person. So, um, yeah, sort of cooking and cleaning-wise, I'd be sort of perfectly fine. Um, I do food and hospitality as one of my major subjects um, in year 12. So, yeah, shouldn't really be too much of a worry. So, um, yeah, looking after myself and kind of the off-field kind of stuff moving in, moving into state, um, yeah, it'd be literally a breeze. So, um, yeah, it's something that really excites me. And, um, yeah, wherever I go, um, yeah, I'd be more than happy to go to. So, yeah, if it was here staying with family or if it was interstate, um, yeah, it'd be really, really cool meeting some new people. Um, and, yeah, I just love it. So, yeah. Dangerous telling the world that you can cook and clean. You'll be, like, yeah. number one flatmate for a lot of uh, people. <laughs> No, no, it's it is. <laughs> now, with your preparation, how has that changed throughout the years of obviously being in the system? Is there anything particularly you like to do? Is there anything that you've really added to your game this year, particularly leading into the draft? Yeah, so preparation-wise is um, something that I'm still um, learning to develop. Um, it's definitely a weak point sort of – in my game, um, I feel like, yeah, it still sort of needs um, really improving that kind of professionalism um, on the off-field as well. So, um, but yeah, I guess the days of sort of just, yeah, rolling out of bed and just rocking up, getting in the car, rocking up to a game, those days are gone. So, um, yeah, the way I'm sort of starting to prepare now is, um, yes, kind of just, yeah, I'd like to get a lot of food into me um, for a game, um, night before as well. Um, yeah, I'm fortunate enough to get a new... Um, uh, massage gun, so I've um, been using that a lot before games. So, yeah, and then when I sort of get to a game, I'm sort of um, kind of just keeping to myself a little bit, a um, little bit energetic, sort of bit of both. But um, yeah, I always like to have a footy in my hand, just whether that's just like flicking up to myself, um, kicking it. Um, like to get on the ground pretty early, and um, yeah, just have a few shots of goal, um, get a sort of a feel for the ground. So, but yeah, I guess preparation, I guess. To overall sum up, yeah, just be, um, yeah, just drink a lot of fluids, um, just all the basic stuff, eat a lot of food, all the right foods, and um, yeah, hopefully that translates well into how I play. So, yeah. Mate, I love that. I love it. It's good insight for us as well, watching at home, just to know what goes into it, because obviously a lot of us are like you described, roll out of bed, get in the car and go to work. So, yeah. obviously for you blokes, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. Now, how have you found chatting to the AFL clubs? I know that must be really daunting. And I know speaking to draftees, that is probably the weirdest experience. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I'd say it's definitely exciting as well as nervous as well. Um, I can remember uh, my first club. Um, yeah, I was absolutely over the moon. Um, yeah, when I found out, you know, um, they really wanted to talk to me and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess um, as the interviews get on, um, you sort of start to get more um, accustomed to them, and um, yeah, you sort of it's you sort of just start to realise yeah, it's just more of a chat and just them wanting to get to know you um, as a person and, and what you do off the field. So yeah, they they do get easier, um, and yeah, I just you know you just take it how how they go, and um, and yeah, you try and prepare you prepare as well as you bet prepare the best you can for them. So. Um, but yeah, no, they're really good. Um, they're all really nice guys. Um, yeah, then no one's really been intimidating. So yeah, um, they, but yeah, they do get easier as they, as they go on. So yeah. Mate, you, you seem like you've adapted well, so you speak well. So I'd imagine that's fairly easy for you. So I love it. Oh, now oh, you, you're in probably a quality state for talent. There's a lot of South Australians in this draft that I talked about. Is there anyone in particular that stands out that you think isn't getting the kudos maybe in the papers that you're surprised about? Um, yeah, I guess there's one from um, – I guess he isn't he isn't in the state squad and he's actually an overager, but I feel like this guy definitely should be getting talked about is um, – and he's actually a good mate of mine and teammate, um, Oscar Steen. Um, yeah, he's he managed to play a fair bit of league footy – uh, which for West Adelaide at the back end of the year. And I just think, yeah, he's still, um, I think AFL clubs, I think he can definitely suit in an AFL environment. Um, just his tap work and his markings um, second to none. So, yeah, I think his name, if I was, yeah, I think his name should be out there a lot more than what it is. So, um, yeah, I'm sure, I'm definitely sure a club 
um, will take a chance on him. And um, yeah, he's a really, really good bloke as well. So yeah, I'd probably say Oscar Stein. Mate, I love that. Check him out. Everyone watching at home, make sure you check him out and give Oscar some love. I mean, you've got some great teammates at West Adelaide as well, haven't you? There's there's Ryan, there's Barnett, all of these guys. Have been yeah, oh, Harry Lemmy as well. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a hate. A lot of tolls as well at West Adelaide. Yeah, I'm you, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, having all us tolls as well. Um, yeah, sort of, um, it's a bit different, but yeah, sort of managed us to win a um, few games at the back end of the year. So, yeah, hopefully. If we had all our tools throughout the year, probably would have been different. But, yeah, no, they're all good. Mate, it shows as well, I suppose, for AFL clubs that you guys can work together. That's the biggest misconception probably in AFL, that too many tools is bad. Like, you yeah. guys are kind of accustomed to working together and working off each other. Yeah. No, it's really good. So, yeah. Now... Tough question, this. Five minutes to go. We're in an elimination yeah. final. Yeah. Two goals down. What are we seeing from Big Tom Scully to get us over the line? Oh, um, yeah. Well, first of all, you, um, probably the big thing would, yeah, just to, just to be try and mark it. Um, yeah, sort of. Now, um, I'd imagine, you know, the defence the defences are going to be sort of pretty crowded. Um, yeah, just be trying to take um, a couple marks. And, um, yeah, if they do, if they do stick... Um, yeah, just trying to put put them through. So yeah, I guess they're kind of the two big fundamentals as a big key forward. Um, and yeah, just literally just trying to create, uh, make sure that the defence doesn't mark it. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, just doesn't mark it. Balls at least to ground. So um, yeah, and literally just um, just compete and um, yeah, make sure the defence doesn't win it. And yeah, try and put it through the big sticks. So yeah. I've got to say as well, watching you, your, your kicking technique is is like melted butter. It's gorgeous to watch. You've got a very nice kicking routine. Oh, cheers, Pom. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Is that something you've worked hard on? It's something that gets criticised a lot in the AFL. We know as Carlton fans, Harry gets a lot of stick for <laughs> kicking around the corner. Is that something you've yeah. worked really hard on? Yeah, it, it was actually. So I'm fortunate enough to have um, at Westies uh, a key um, development coach. So Damon Head, um, he works. He worked a lot with me, obviously Harry Barnett, Harry Lemmy, um, and a guy named Darcy Michella. So um, we were fortunate to have him around the club um, a lot, just helping us out. Um, yeah, but yeah, he was really big for me. Um, yeah, he really helped on my marking and goal kicking, just sort of making sure um, I'm just kicking through it. And, you know, my run-up's sort of consistent. It's not sort of longer on one shot and sort of shorter on the next one. It's just remaining consistent. Um, and, yeah, really making sure my ball drops sort of not too high, keeping a little bit lower. So, um, yeah, just little sort of tips and tricks. But, yeah, no, he was really good throughout the pre-season just helping me out. So, yeah. Mate, uh, mate it's good to see that you're working on that because that's the biggest thing you'll get criticised on in the AFL news yeah. flash that that's what they all pick up on the pokey forwards yeah now for those watching at home if they were going to go and check out this fluid kicking action what game are they going to go and watch tom what is your best game you think you've played Ooh. that they could go and um i feel like uh round six against north adelaide um yeah i'd only say that because um yeah they just all sort of um yeah, they just all kind of went through. Um, there were a couple of misses in there, but yeah, I felt like um, my marking was good. Um, I felt like, you know, I was able to get um, some separation um, and yeah, playing, a, playing some pretty good opponents. So um, yeah, I managed to sort of kick, uh, kick, kick a few that day. So um, yeah, I'd probably say sort of round six um, against North Adelaide. Yeah. Mate, it's quite easy to find sandful games as well. Those who were out there watching, that for some reason, South Australia actually gives good coverage of their juniors. So there will be lots yeah. of highlights there on YouTube for those who want to go and check that out. Now, you've mentioned some people who have been part of your journey. Who stands out as a big influence on how getting you to where you are now? Who, who's your big go-to person? Um, yeah, definitely be my dad, uh, my old man. He's sort of been the one um, that, yeah, sort of really, um, yeah, sort of just been there for me, Been always been in my corner. Um, yeah, I'm really fortunate. I have a really good support network around me. So, um, but yeah, he's always been the one that's always been encouraging me. Um, 
yeah, whenever I want to kick, um, back when I was younger, he was always there. Um, yeah, but he, it was never sort of um, <clears throat> kind of that sort of real extreme sort of parenting. He was just there um, simply just for me. Um, and it just really encouraged the enjoyment factor um, that, you know, football should be. So, um, yeah, whenever I wanted to kick, I'd always just sort of ask him and, yeah, he'd always be there for me. So, um, yeah, he I don't think he's missed a game. So, um, yeah, he's always at, he's always at the games um, throughout this year, So except when I played in the state. But, um, yeah, always gives me feedback. He's just sort of very like me. Um, he doesn't sort of sugarcoat my performances and stuff like that. Like, you know, if I played a bad game, he sort of, um, he really lets me know about it. And, um, yeah, he sort of just taught me to be humble and stuff like that. And um, just remember, like, the people who along the journey who were there for you and stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely be um, – oh, man, he's been huge for me. Mate, I love that. As a father yeah. myself, I hope one day my kids uh, get asked that question and throw my name out there. So that's that's great to hear, mate. It's great to hear. Yeah. Now, is there a team – obviously, in seven days' time, you're going to put this team in the bin – dependent on where you drafted, but is there a particular team that you're a fan of? Yeah, so massive Port, man. Um, yeah, I love, I've been following Port um, since, uh, yeah, since I've been in reception. So, um, yeah, I've been liking the bikes of, I uh, really like the bikes of, um, yeah, Justin Westoff back in the day. Um, Matt Loby, who uh, was a ruck for Port. And, yeah, now obviously Charlie Dixon and Scotty Lysett, who, yeah, probably the two most scariest bikes in the AFL. Um, yeah, they can really sort of lay lay a big hit and a big tackle. So, um, yeah, just their presence um, just brings the whole Port team with them. So, um, yeah, they've been kind of my favourite players for Port. Mate, I love that. I mean, big Charlie Dixon, he's a great role model as well. I mean, the longevity yeah. of his career is phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah. Now, going into the future, we're 15 years, you've retired – how are we remembering you, Tom? How do you want to be remembered as a footballer? Um, yeah, I definitely want to be remembered as a sort of team oriented player. Um, I'm not sort of one for individual success. Um, definitely hope to have um, a few sort of premierships next to my name. Um, and, yeah, celebrate that with, um, with the team. So, um, yeah, I kind of just want to be um, a goal-kicking forward. Um, that, yeah, just sort of uh, – just, just a competitor, um, someone that – um, gave it all for the forward line and gave it all for the team. So, um, yeah, sort of never sort of backed away or shied away from anything. And, um, yeah, gave it all, gave it his all for the club. Mate, I love that. Mate, good answer. Good answer there. And the last football question and probably the hardest, put yeah. you on the spot. You're the list manager. What pick do you think you deserve to go to? Oh, um, yeah, probably... 40 to 50, um, somewhere in that range. Um, yeah, um, obviously not playing sort of that many amount of champs games. I'm kind of, yeah, um, yeah, probably around 40 to 50. So, um, yeah, thought I managed to close out the year pretty well. So, yeah, somewhere around there. Even if it was to be um, in the rookie draft, I'd, I'd be over the moon. So, yeah, wherever I go is wherever I go. Hey, it's a, it's a good answer. It's a good answer. It's a humble answer. I like it. I like it. Now, we end with some more fun ones. Celebrity posters. Who did you have on your wall as a kid? Yeah, so I was a big um, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, fan. So growing up, I did play soccer. So I had a massive um, poster of him when he was at Real Madrid. So, um, yeah, it always just used to, I used to wake up to it every morning. Um, yeah, just used massive poster that my auntie brought me back from London. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure where it is now, but... Um, yeah, no, I do, I do remember it was being, um, yeah, big sort of on the back of the door. So, yeah. Uh, mate, you're talking to the right person as well. Like, oh, big mate, you fan, there he is. Yeah. You know I mean? Not sure. so, the, the last yeah. video I did, I was wearing that shirt. So, perfect timing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Not sure um, if he's going to be a man you still soon, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we might not see him turn out for the Mighty yeah. Reds, but are we going to see his celebration in the AFL? Surely you bring the Sioux to the uh, oh, AFL. Oh, nah, no, not, not one, not definitely not one for a celebration. Um, yeah, no, no, no way. No. Mate, I'm itching to see a celebration in the AFL. Like, uh, I think you should bring it for him. When If you keep five, surely the fifth gets the oh. Sioux. Yeah, probably probably going to look to get a game first in the first place. So, yeah, no, we'll see. Um, now, most bizarre food you've ever tried? 
What's what's oh, out of that food? Um, it definitely be frog legs. Um, I had that in uh, Paris when we went overseas about four or five four or five years ago. Um, yeah, no, didn't like it. It was just very sort of bony and um, yeah, just kind of really tasted like garlic to be honest. So yeah, nah, never again. May. As a European, we've obviously I've tried them. I've got to admit, I, I never understand the frog's legs and the snails because it is just yeah. basically garlic, yeah. chewy garlic. Yeah, it literally, yeah, snails aren't that good either. So, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a bizarre thing. Now, if you had a theme song to your life, what would it be? What what track are you playing? Oh, um, oh, jeez. That's a good question. Um, oh, oh, um, probably oh, Mr. Brightside. Um, yeah, not not that it has really. It's just a really good song. Um, yeah, it's the one that I listen to a fair bit. So, um, Mate, yeah, I like Mr. it. Mate, I like it. It's it, it's good and it's a it's a cracking track. The Killers. You can't go wrong with a bit of the Killers. Yeah, no, you definitely can't go wrong. Yeah. Now, Christmas just around the corner. What's the best Christmas present you've ever received? Oh, best Christmas present I've ever received. Um, or oh, probably be a point my headphones. Um, my headphones that, um, my headphones, I'd probably say. So, yeah, mate, I love that. I love that. Now, have you got a guilty pleasure you watch on TV when you're relaxing? Yeah, so um, there's a new Netflix show that's out at the moment, um, Wild Crop Territory by Matty Wright. So, um, yeah, been starting to sort of get into that. Um, yeah, just like seeing sort of the crocodiles and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit, little bit interesting. So, yeah, a bit of an odd one, but, yeah, probably Wild Crop Mate, Territory. Mate, that's a different answer. A lot of the South Australian boys have gone with Love Island, which surprised me. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting <laughs> it from uh, aspiring footballers. And we end with... What fictional character do you most associate with? Someone, maybe a cartoon, TV show, someone that you see oh, a bit in yourself. With? Um, geez, that's another good one. Um, oh, can I say James Bond? Yeah, you can do. Um, yeah, not that it really associates with me, but yeah, it's sort of a fictional character. The character. Um, that I did like sort of um, growing up, sort of used to watch all those movies and went to Thailand and stuff like that where he filmed The Man with the Golden Gun. So, um, yeah, probably yeah, probably say that. You're on the right show. I'm a pom. So, I mean, that, you've sold it to me. You've sold it to me, a bit of James yeah, Bond. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Tom, thank you so much for taking time out of what I'd imagine is a hectic schedule to chat to us. And on behalf of the channel, we wish you the best of luck. We've talked about you for a while now and, we can't wait to see you get drafted. And hopefully it's to my beloved Carlton. We'd love to see you here being the uh, deputy of Harry and Charlie and see you kick some snags for the Blues faithful. But best of luck, my friend, and thank you so much for your time. Cheers, Pom. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, mate.